This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Today we have a very, 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 very important uh, show. It's about your spirit and your soul and you know, getting out of the insanity that we're swimming in right now. And we're talking about a special guest, Hal Elrod. He's most well known for the book, Miracle Morning. And he's gonna be promoting his latest movie coming out, The Miracle Morning Movie. But before we begin, I wanna to talk to you about what you've done for our marriage here is this. It's long before I met Hal, if it was in Lake Tahoe or something, Kim has always been practicing Miracle Morning. She gets up and she does her routines. It's not quite your routine, but she's always studying spiritual things and she sits in silence and meditates and looks at trees. And meanwhile, I'm sucking down the coffee and, and watching CNBC and going nuts. But other than that, so I go up to Lake Tahoe and I meet this guy, Hal Elrod, and he tells me about this book called Miracle Morning. So your book was just fantastic because it translated what Kim does naturally every morning, which I wasn't doing. And if you can understand that, it was that my miracle morning was if I didn't have a cardiac going out the door. <laughs> Anything you wanna say? Well, yeah, but, but now <laughs> your miracle morning is like, you're on it every single morning. You've been doing yeah. this for how many years? Many, many years. So I wanna thank Hal, you know, for his book, <laughs> Miracle Morning, because um, you know, I've lost probably, I don't know how much weight I've lost, but uh, my pants fit. And then my health has gone up, blood pressure's come down, Eat diabetes, and uh, so it's you're really a little been a bit, a little bit calmer. You're a little bit calmer. Not much. I'm st- you, you catch yourself more often than you used uh, to. It, it, it's it's only one cup of coffee, and then I'm, but I, I still I still check the markets and all that stuff. But I do practice what Kim does. We read, you know, we read um, a spiritual book every morning a little bit. I, I, I listen to them, books on tape like Tolly and all that. And you, you like, you well, like yeah, summer. every, every morning I, I'm, I'm, I've got like six different spiritual books. I read from one of them every morning. And my goal is that each day what I read, then I do my best to put that into practice for the day. Yeah. I do some journaling. Sometimes I meditate. Yeah. Yeah. But you, I, I would say being married to Robert Kim requires a miracle morning. That's just my <laughs> guess. <at it. laughs> How'd you know that? How? How'd you know that? <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, miracle morning translated between Kim's morning and my morning. <laughs> I still like my morning. It's high drama, high stress, you know, high tension, but I do take the time because as you say, it's that first hour. You know, that first morning, that first hour in the morning that sets up your day. And what happens is after four cups of coffee, sometimes th- uh, five, I was wired, man. And it was killing me. It really was killing me. But anyway, Hal, tell us. About, Welcome to the show, Hal. Yeah, nice Hal, to have you here. Very excited so about tell, your movie. So tell us about your book, Miracle Morning, how you came about it and how it is emorph- it's morphing into the Miracle Morning movie. Yeah, into a movie. Um, so first of all, I just I have to I, I have to express my gratitude uh, to both of you and for having not just having me on the show, but Robert, you've been one of the biggest advocates of the Miracle Morning. I get messages from people saying, "Hey, I, I'm here in South Africa, and Robert was on stage today talking about this book, The Miracle Morning, that you wrote that changed his life." And like you know, it just uh, so grateful for your support. So thank you for that. Um, the, when I had to do that self-published copy of the Miracle Morning, thinking he's never going to read this. Who am I kidding? But well, you miss all the shots you don't take, so I'll give it a shot. So um, the Miracle Morning started as my little morning routine back in 2008 when the United States economy had crashed and I crashed with it. I had lost over half of my coaching clients, therefore half of my income. My house was foreclosed on by the bank. My body fat percentage had tripled and I went into kind of a depression. And um it was this six month downward spiral where I was looking for, for solutions, trying to turn my life around. And I kept coming across when I was searching that that people were doing morning routines and morning rituals. Some of the world's most successful people that was their, that was their, what they swore by, but I wasn't a morning person. So I'm like, nah, what else can I do? And finally, uh, one of the articles opened my eyes and shifted my thinking. And I went, okay, if I want to change my life, I have to change myself. I've got to become a better version of myself in order to create a better version of my life. And then I thought, well, when am I going to do that? And, you know, it was really obvious that 
doing it first thing in the morning would set the tone and the context and the direction for the rest of my day. So I then Googled what are the best personal development practices practiced by millionaires and billionaires and athletes and CEOs. Like I tried to combine what's the best and created these six practices which you know well, they're now known as the SAVERS, it's an acronym, SAVERS, silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing. And, and, and uh, Robert, I often paraphrase you when I'm teaching this and I say, you know, Robert was interviewing me on Rich Dad Radio when the first book first came out. And at the end of the interview, you know, I'm paraphrasing what you said, but you said something along the lines of how any one of the SAVERS will change a person's life. But the way that you've combined all six it really creates miracles for people, you know, and, and that really is true. It's stacking these six habits. And so, um, I practiced this within two months of doing it. My life changed so dramatically where I doubled my income in 2008 when the economy was still tanking, I doubled my income. I went from being in the worst shape of my life physically to running a 52 mile ultra marathon and my depression went away in a matter of days. And I went to my wife and I said, sweetheart, this morning routine, it feels like a freaking miracle. She goes, it's your miracle morning. And I go, yeah, I go, that's catchy. I like it. Miracle morning. So when my schedule every day is miracle morning, but it was never a book idea. It was never a movie idea for sure. But I started sharing it with all of my clients and one by one, almost every single one of them went from not being a morning person to saying this miracle morning thing was now changing their life the way it had changed mine. And then that's when I felt I have a responsibility to share this with the world. And it took me three years in 2012 on 12, 12, 12. I published the book, self-published it. Uh, now it's been uh, published by traditional publishers in 36 other languages and translated in 36 other languages. Um, and about three, five years ago, five or six years ago, a good friend of mine, this leads into the movie, um, reached out and he said, Hal, I'm, I'm in your Miracle Morning community and I see people sharing these profound transformations they're having from, you know, one guy lost 90 pounds after he started the miracle morning where his entire life, his life, he struggled with his weight. Now, a lot of people overcame their depression. People started all these amazing results. He said, we should create a documentary, a movie that shows people the, 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 the these amazing transformations people are having in their life. And I said, I love that idea circle back. I, I can't imagine. I don't even know what that looks like. I'm really busy. And he kept pinging me over the next few weeks. And finally he called me one day and he broke through my, my resistance. He said, Hal, what is your mission in life? And I said, it's to elevate the consciousness of humanity one morning at a time. And, and I knew he knew that. And he said, what percentage of humanity reads self-help books? I said, gosh, I think it's like 1%. It's, 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 it's pretty low. And he said, what percentage of humanity watches television, watches movies? And I got where he was going. I go, gosh, you know, in developed countries, at least the other 99%, I would say, um, I guess we're making a movie. And then Robert, you, I had just met you. You had just interviewed me. And I said, hey, if we could get Robert Kiyosaki in the film and then name drop him, <laughs> I said, you know, he's got such, such a great reputation, such credibility. I said, I think that we could really get to the showcase, the morning routines of some of the world's most successful people. And this six year journey, um, we filmed the morning rituals of, you know, of you and Kim, uh, of, um, Brendan Burchard and Layla Ali, Muhammad Ali's daughter and, uh, Mel Robbins and Robin Sharma. And, you know, the list goes on and on and on. And, um, and the last thing I just want to share is halfway through filming, I was diagnosed with a rare aggressive form of cancer. Um, in fact, your voicemail that you left me is also in the film wishing me well, uh, but I was given a 30% chance of surviving and didn't look very good. And I called our filmmaker and I said, Hey, the movie's on hold. You know, I, I can't, I can't believe I'm telling you this, but I actually have cancer and I've, I've got a 30% chance of, of surviving this cancer. So I've got to focus all my energy on healing. And he said, I want to film your journey because this is going to be part of the movie. It's part of the story. And at first I was really resistant and, and I'm so glad that I let him have his way, if you will, because now the first hour of the film is exactly what we intended it to be. And the final 30 minutes is a very intimate look at me and my cancer journey and fighting for my life. And I feel like 
what the world needs right now is a paradigm shift that says it doesn't matter what's going on in your outer world. You are in control of your inner world and the way that you feel and the way that you think and how you act, how you show up in your everyday life isn't about what's going on around you. It's about what's going on inside of you. And I think the most important thing for all of us to do is optimize our inner world right now so that we can take control and create the outer world, the circumstances that we want. And so that, um, yeah, sorry, that was a long answer, but, but that, that's the, the movie and the book and everything in a nutshell. Well, you, the outer world is a reflection of your inner world. You know, like, yes, exactly. Like if people right now are hurting either health wise or wealth wise, they lost their jobs and all that. It started on the inside. You know, and, and um, it's, it's hard, it's, it's easier to blame. You know, blame stands for be lame. Well, it's, it's the president's fault, it's COVID's fault, it's the capitalist's fault, it's this and all that. But that's, that's where most people are at. But it, it's also, um, you know, with all the negativity in the world right now and all the drama and all of the chaos to not to retreat to your inner self, but to know that you're in control of your own life. And I sit there in the morning and I'll read one of my books and it just like calms me down, <laughs> gives me a perspective going, I don't participate in all that other crap. Um, and, me and meanwhile, I'm yelling at the TV. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something very, uh, very powerful about knowing that you're in control of your life knowing that the outer stuff around you is not, does not define who you are. So let me say that you've actually had, you've nearly, you died for six minutes. You look yeah. pretty good for a dead man, but how are you doing? What, yeah, what the <laughs> what happened? Yeah, I came back. They brought me back to life. I was clinically dead. Uh, I was 20 years old, hit head on by a drunk driver uh, and died for six minutes without, you know, heart stop for six minutes, wasn't breathing, of course. And they revived me uh, on a helicopter flying to the hospital and uh, brought me back to life. And I spent six days in a coma, was told I would never walk again. And uh, that was my first kind of wake up call at age 20 that really shifted the direction of my life. And and, and I decided to dedicate my life to the work that I do now, which is like, how can I use my experiences uh, and what I've overcome to help other people realize that they can overcome anything in their life? And what would you say when you had cancer? Have you, have you beat that now? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was diagnosed with cancer a little over three years ago. Um, and uh, I just got off chemo about four months ago, which that was the, uh, the uh, that's the right. The, the chemo is what beats you up, you know, worse than the cancer in a lot of ways. And so, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm I am cancer free and, um, the, uh, you know, spoiler alert, the movie, when you're watching it, you know, it looks like I'm not going to make it, but I, you now know that I did. So, yeah, I'm <laughs> so, great, very grateful to say that I'm cancer free. So uh, congratulations. And I, I know, you know, you're practicing miracle morning and all of this. Is there something that you else you did differently? What did, why did you survive or other people don't? Yeah, the great question. I think there's two things. Um, number one is I, the day I was diagnosed with cancer and I met with this oncologist who I didn't, I had never met before. Um, I said, Hey, I said, doc, no, no offense. You know, I know that you, you, uh, prescribed chemo. I said, I, I don't want to do chemo. I don't want to put that poison in my body. I want to cure this holistically. And he said, Hal, um, you don't have that luxury. I appreciate that you want to do that, but you don't have a cancer, like a slow growing tumor that you can change your diet and see how it responds. At, at the time I was in the hospital, I was there because my, my lungs were failing, my kidneys were failing and my heart was on the verge of failing. And, um, he said, if you don't start chemo in the next, you know, 24 hours, uh, you're, you've got a few days to live, maybe, maybe a week or two at most. And I didn't know this doctor. So, and my wife's sitting there squeezing my hand as hard as she can and in tears. And I'm, I kind of was a little bit, I, I thought, you know, he was trying to scare me into doing chemo. And so I said, Hey, well, I'd like, you know, give us 24 hours to go home and talk about this. It's a major decision. And I went home and I Googled my particular cancer and, 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 and basically he wasn't exaggerating. You, it kills people in a matter of days, maybe a week or two. And so almost by force of hand, I felt like, well, I, I kind of have to do chemo. In fact, we called some of the best natural holistic doctors in the world. And they said, we cannot promise, like go do chemo with your cancer. That's the best thing you can do. And so I was really resistant, but I did the chemo, but here was the big decision. 
the two decisions. Number one was my mental and number two was logistical. What did I do? The actions that I took, the actions were this. I decided, okay, if I have to do chemo, I'm also going to research and do every holistic practice that's available as if I were not doing chemo and it were all I was doing. So I did chemo, but I also did, um, you know, acupuncture and ozone sauna and I took, you know, 70 supplements a day and organic juicing every day. And I did um, uh, coffee enemas, which, you know, that, that's about as, you know, outside the box and difficult as it gets. But, um, and, and so that was it doing the best of both worlds. And I was in remission within a matter of a month or two. And the doctors kind of like when I had my car accident, they could hardly, they couldn't, they, they couldn't believe how well I was responding to the chemo. Um, and I kept on that. And still to this day, I don't do chemo anymore, but I still do coffee enemas twice a week. I still juice every day. I still, I have ginger and garlic, right? I'm, I'm living an anti-cancer lifestyle, which I've been doing since the day I was diagnosed. And the second, and maybe, maybe more, at least equally important is unwavering faith. I made a decision that I will live to be a hundred years old alongside my wife and kids, no matter what, there is no other option. And whenever I was faced with fear, I didn't dwell in that space. I went, nope, not going to dwell there. I'm going to replace that fear with faith. Whenever I was afraid, what if I die? What if I leave my kids without a dad? I would pull out my affirmation during my miracle morning, which I did every single day that said, I am committed to living to be 100 plus years old alongside Ursula and the kids, no matter what, there is no other option. And you know, that mind body connection where here's the layman's explanation. We have a trillion cells or 40 trillion cells in our body. It's our little army and they do what they're told. And if you live in fear, they manifest what you're afraid of. But if you live in faith, they manifest what you're investing your faith into. That's my, you know, simple explanation. And that's why when I was told I wouldn't walk again, and I told the doctors I'm going to walk. And then two weeks later, I took my first step and they, they couldn't explain it. And then with the cancer, the same thing. So for anybody listening, you know, unwavering faith and extraordinary effort in whatever it is in your life that you want and that you're committed to. I believe those are the two decisions that may make anything possible. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, everybody listening to this, that really is a thing. We're not saying don't do chemo. We're not, we're not prescribing medicines. We don't prescribe investments and all that. But I think we're talking about the power we all have, but it's a, it's a faith and a spirituality. So we come back with going more into what a person can do to, you know, I'd rather be preventative than reactive, if you know what I mean. That's yeah. And so that's what your uh, miracle book, Miracle Morning did for me because Kim was already practicing is that you start your day off calm and, and ready to go for the day. So we come back, we'll be talking to more, to Hal Elrod more about his Miracle Morning movie and his book, The Miracle Morning. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad, um, <laughs> the Rich Dad Radio. The, I was going to say the Rich Dad Miracle Morning, but anyway. <laughs> and well, the good news, hey, the good mm -hmm. news and bad news about money. Uh, you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, or YouTube. And please leave your review when you listen. And all of our programs are archived at Rich Dad Radio. Just go to Rich Dad Radio, look up Hal Elrod Miracle Morning. And the reason we do that is listen to this program again, you'll gain twice as much, but more importantly, you know, share this podcast with friends, family, and business associates and discuss it. And you'll find out your intelligence will actually grow, not diminish your Any comments, Kim? Uh, yes, so something that you don't know, Hal, is um, a friend of ours in South Carolina, we were having lunch one day and Robert mentioned Miracle Morning and that we didn't know much about his life. And so Robert was talking about this book, well, a few months later, we were playing golf together and we, he said, can we just stop for a minute? I just want to talk with you for a little bit. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, I started practicing Miracle Morning. And, and what he told me is he had severe for, for many, 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 many years, severe depression, highs, lows, highs, wow. lows, highs, lows. He's tried everything. He's done all sorts of treatments. Um, he's very much into holistic he said with Miracle Morning, and there was another practice he was using, utilizing at the time, he said those two things together have brought everything calm. Wow. And it, he said, I'm a new person. He said, my wife doesn't know who I am anymore, and she's very happy with her new husband. Um, yeah, it was really quite amazing. So That's incredible. Will, yeah, thank, thank you for you sharing for, that. that. That yeah. means so much. I know it, I know <laughs> it does, because I know that's why you do the work. 
And the yeah. other thing too is our medical doctor, uh, Dr. Radha Gopalan, his story is he's from Sri Lanka and he was in med school and the Tamil Tigers shut everything down just like what's gonna happen in America, they're gonna take care of everything. They shut everything down and so his med school got shut down. Hmm. So he went, the only school that was open was an acupuncture school. So he went to the acupuncture school to prove how phony acupuncture was. And so he signed up as an acupuncturist and he, he saw religion, you know, he says, holy mackerel. He says, wow. the body can heal itself. Mm. And so he's our Dr. Radha Gopalan. And he, he's the guy who did my open heart surgery. He's a heart transplant that. cardiologist. I mean, he sees both worlds. So yeah, book, oh yeah, wow. His, his, his book is a second opinion because m many doctors, as you know, are closed. It's, it's, it's hardcore, you know, roach poisoning called chemo. Yeah. Or nothing. Yeah. You know, and what you're providing is the other side of it, where it's a, a spiritual healing. So with yeah. that, anyway, please continue on, Hal. Yes, tell, so Savers. Tell us yeah. about Savers and tell us what, what can we do today? So the Miracle Morning, is, I mentioned it's made up of these six practices, Savers, S-A-V-E-R-S. -E um, I'll run through these real quick. And the, to, before I run through them, I just want to say, because this question always comes up, okay, do I have to do all six of these in the exact order? Do I have to do them for a certain amount of time? I just want to say that what I'm about to share is completely customizable. You can do these in any order. You could do an hour-long Miracle Morning, which is what most people do. But in the book, there's a chapter called the Six-Minute Miracle Morning. So really anywhere in between. And then some people on weekends will do like a two or three hour, you know, miracle morning as well. Um, so the savers, these are the six practices that make a miracle morning, but also as Robert said, you know, back when you interviewed me a long time ago, these are the six most proven, effective, ancient wisdom, you know, practices in the history of humanity. And they've been practiced for centuries and most of the world's most successful people. In fact, Robert, you said every successful person on the planet before the miracle morning did at least one of these practices and swore by it, but you had never heard of anybody yourself included that had done all six. And so the first S is for silence and that's starting your day in meditation and or prayer time. It's quieting the mind to allow the wisdom of God or higher consciousness or your own infinite intelligence to rise to the surface. And for most people, right? Most of us, if you just wake up and just go through the motions, you hit the snooze button, you wake up at the last minute, you don't have that time. Then you just, keep repeating the same life every day over and over the same thoughts. You wake up, you eat the same thing. You check your phone. You're like, Robert, you watch CNN, right? And without that space. No, not, not, not CNN. CNN. Yeah. <laughs> not CNN. Not CNN. Okay. I don't watch the communist news network. But I do watch it. their affiliate CNBC, but I like Fox business better. But anyway, <laughs> it just ahead. gets my blood pressure going. And then I pump it. I'm pumping down three cups of coffee. I'm screaming at the stock market and then I go to work. <laughs> so, and that's why Robert now starts his day with silence before he gets into the news. Um, so starting your day with that meditation, the A in Sabres is for affirmations. And I want to, I want to dive into this one for a minute because affirmations yeah, are a lot arguably. Of different, yeah. I've heard a lot of different things on affirmations. So when you're referring to affirmations specifically, I think that what? They are the most misunderstood and therefore ineffective form of personal development if you don't understand them. And so the reason is they've been taught by self-help gurus for decades to either number one, tell yourself something as if it were true that is not yet true. Yes. In other words, lie to yourself. So yes. if you wanna be thin and you're overweight, you say, I am thin, I am thin, I am thin. But if you're not, then you're lying to yourself and you're, you're fighting with truth and the truth will always prevail. So lying to exactly yourself is the, never this the- This is exactly the problem I've had with affirmations. So thank you for this. Go yes. Th yeah. You're welcome. Lying is the never the awesome strategy. The scientific strategy. term is called bullshit. That's what it's called. <laughs> Don't the bullshit yourself. So instead of I am statements, these are BS statements that you're talking about, Robert. Um, so the second problem with affirmations is that we're taught to use this flowery passive language that provides a magical result, such as I am a money magnet. Money <laughs> flows to me effortlessly and in abundance. Like you guys are laughing. Oh, I've heard it. I've heard it. You built a fortune, not because you're a magnet and you sat back and stared at a vision board and no, waited for stuff to, right? We busted our ass. So I, you were busting I, I your ass. I lost, I lost everything. Immediately. <laughs> 
Here's three really simple steps to create affirmations that are practical, that are actionable, and that create tangible results in your life. Step number one, affirm what you're committed to, no matter what, there's no other option. You heard me reference my affirmation around cancer in the first segment. So I am committed to blank, no matter what, there's no other option. In life, we don't get what we want, we get what we are committed to. So to affirm that every day over and over, I am committed to blank no matter what, there's no other option. That is step one. Step two is affirm why it is crucial for you. Why is it so meaningful, so important that you're gonna do whatever it takes? That's the second step to get that deeply meaningful why and affirm it every single day. And then step three is affirm which specific actions you'll take and when. So if you follow this formula and I have this for every area of my life as a parent, as you know, in my finances, in my business, for my impact, in my health, every area of my life follows these three steps is the foundational <clears throat> affirmation formula. What are you committed to? Why is it crucial for you or deeply meaningful for you? And what are the specific actions you're gonna take and win? And when you use affirmations this way, you're programming yourself, you're aligning your subconscious mind, your conscious mind and your actions to be in alignment with the outcomes that you're committed to in your life. And so again, it's not woo woo. You're not lying to yourself. You're dealing in reality in a way that's going to move you in the direction of the things you want to create for your life. Well, the reason that's important is because, you know, like, um, I, I read, I have Tali on, uh, what do you call it? Audible. Uh, audio. Because anytime I'm upset, I listen to him. Yeah. You know, he talks about going, going beyond silence, go to stillness. Mm. But the other thing I became aware of is what my friend Blair Sengal talks about the little voice. I get up, I don't, I'm not even aware I'm talking to myself and I'm saying crap to me. You know, I'm mm. saying garbage to myself and I get more depressed as I head to the shower and all this stuff. I'm getting more depressed because my mind is out of control. So what you're saying is the purpose of the affirmation is to take control of what you're saying to yourself. Is that, is that accurate? Y yes. And, and in the simplest form, I know I just gave everybody that three-step formula, but I just, I want to broad, I want to go zoom out a little bit. In the simplest form, an affirmation is simply a reminder of what is important for you to focus on, for you to think, for you to feel, for you to believe. And so Robert, to your point, I'm the same way. I'll wake up sometimes and I feel happy. And then as the, the, the first 10, 20 minutes, I start thinking about, oh, I got to do this. I upset that person. I'm, I'm stressed about this thing. Oh my God, I forgot. I've got seven other things I have to do. And and all of a sudden, you know, you're getting, and that's where if someone doesn't have that morning routine where then I go to my affirmations and I read them and I go, oh yeah, oh, it's okay. Breathe. This is who I am. This is what's important. This is what I'm committed to. And it's, and, and, and no matter what's going on in my outer world, I can choose to be at peace with my inner world. I always say that you can be stressed out or you can be blissed out. Life's going to happen, you know, either way. Yeah. <clears throat> with, with me, as us to, uh, as Kim all tells you, says, how can you, I'm, I start off negative every day. Yeah. But I, I use my negativity to inspire me. <laughs> but it's not a very good practice. I'm not recommending <laughs> it. But uh, so <clears throat> I'm doing my best to change that. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And you're making great progress. So V. So V. So V is for visualization. And in terms of if you're wondering, eh, should I do visualization? Consider that if you, if you go back to the archives of interviews of the world's most successful athletes, almost every single one of them from Tiger Woods, when he was the number one golfer in the world to Michael Jordan or, you know, Serena Williams, they all talk about visualization and they use visualization to visualize themselves performing at a peak and rehearse that in their mind, body, and spirit before it's game time. And the way that visualization has been taught similar to affirmations, I think is counter it's, it's, counterproductive. We're taught to visualize just the end result, right? Make a vision board and stare at the house you want and the body you want. The problem with that is you, it's literally counterproductive in that you trick your mind into thinking those are inevitable outcomes. If you see it so many times, you start to think, yeah, eh, you get numb to it. The most important part of creating those outcomes is your drive and your actions in doing so. So two really simple steps to effective visualization. Number one, Yes, visualize your ideal outcome because it fuels your drive and your desire to make it happen. But the most important part of visualization is the second part, which is every morning, visualize yourself engaged in the 
in the crucial activities that you must do for the day while in an optimum emotional state and condition that. So here's an example. When I was training for an ultra marathon, I hated running. I still hate running. I was doing it to challenge myself to get out of my comfort zone physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to do something that was so far beyond what I thought was possible. Every morning I would visualize myself crossing the finish line. I actually printed a picture of the Atlantic city marathon finish line so I could see it and, and feel what it would feel like to cross that finish line. And that fueled my drive and desire. But if I would have left it there, I would have been, I would have felt complacent. Like, wow, I can see it. I'm going to do it. The most important part was every morning I visualized my alarm going off on my phone at 7 a.m., walking into my bedroom closet, getting dressed in my running clothes, heading out the front door, and I would always see myself opening the front door, staring at the pavement and smiling and flooded with emotions of this is going to be a great run. I can't wait for this. And guess what happened? Every morning at 7 a.m. when the alarm went off, I picked it up. And it was automatic. I walked into my bedroom closet, got dressed in my clothes, headed out the front door with a smile on my face. And I wasn't thinking I hate running because that's not what I rehearsed that morning. It was that visualization. And you can apply this, whether it's cold calling people or engaging with your family, visualize yourself engaged in the ideal activities that you need to do each day in an optimum emotional state. So how, how important is that smile? <laughs> right? If you're going, I don't it's want to the, do it's this. It's the emotions this. that the smile provo- <laughs> you know, pr- pr- invokes, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're going to short a time. So Hal, uh, what's next? In the ER. All right. We'll go through the last three very quickly. Exercise. You don't need to go to the gym for an hour in the morning, but you need to stretch for five minutes, do some jumping jacks, get your blood flowing. The R in Sabres is for reading. And if you just read five pages a day, that's nine 200 page self-help books a year, right? 10 pages a day, you're looking at 18 200 page self-help books a year. So every morning, consider you're only one book away from learning one strategy that can transform your marriage, your health, your finances, or anything else. And then last but not least is scribing, which is a fancy word for journaling. And just every day I write down three things I'm grateful for. And then I look at my to-do list of 10 things and I write down the top three activities that if I follow through with today, it'll move the needle in my life and in my business more than any other. And those six practices, as my friend Robert Kiyosaki says, (laughs) any one of those will change your life. When you do all six, it truly is a miracle morning. So anyway, thank, thank you for the help, but how can people sign up for the uh, movie? How do the they... movie, go to miraclemorningmovie.com and we are doing a full blown, not only is the world premiere happening on 12, 12, 2020, it comes with a live training. It comes with a live Q and a, yes. you get a digital download of the movie. Like it's a full on package for 1995. And if you go to miraclemorningmovie.com, go there first, watch the trailer. I'm really pleased with how the trailer came out. So watch the trailer. And then if you want to join us for the live experience, this is really the next step in my mission to elevate the consciousness of humanity humanity one person at a time one morning at a time and i'm so grateful for everybody listening well, thank, thank you Hal. Hal. keep up the good work yes Fantastic. and happy to hear you're so healthy too yeah thank you so run thank through savers one more time. So first to spell it out again the acronym what does Savers stand for silence affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing. And we interview some of the world's most successful people like Robert and Kim in the movie to show you how they apply each of those to their own life. Yeah. And you know, a lot of the multi-billionaires like Ray Dalio, he says, you know, he's, he meditates all the time. He's a sure. meditation place for all. all well, I stuff. remember, I remember my, my mom's friends when I was in college, they, I was in Hawaii and um, they had a fam- uh, they had a, a friend vacation and like four couples got together and there's one guy and he's by far the most successful of this whole group of friends bond, by far. He was the bond trader. Right? Yeah, he's a bond trader and by far the most successful. He meditated every single day and I know this because we went out to dinner one night and he hadn't meditated that day. So before dinner, he pulled himself off to a corner in the restaurant outside wow. and he sat there for 20 minutes and did his meditation. So there's a That's lot to be said. That's some serious commitment. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, if, you know, thank you, Hal. Keep up the great work. And I want everybody to go check out the Miracle Morning Movie. I mean, we will. And uh, MiracleMorningMovie.com. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. All thank right. you, Hal. Thank you, Keep Hal. up the great work. Thank you. So appreciate much. Appreciate you, you guys. Glad thank you're you. back from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> Take Bye-bye. care. And when we come back, we'll be talking about your morning anima. 
No, <laughs> <laughs> so, Kim and I will be summarizing what we do in the mornings. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll be, we'll, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. Good news and bad news about money. I want to thank Hal Elrod. He has got he's a book, The Miracle Morning, and now The Miracle Morning Movie. You can listen to Rich Dad Radio anytime, anywhere, and iTunes, Android, or YouTube. And please listen. If you want to listen to this program again, go to Rich Dad Radio. We archive all of our programs because we don't sell anything. We're not saying don't go see your doctor or meditate. <clears throat> We're just saying if you listen to this program again, you'll learn twice as much. And if you share with friends, family, and business associates and discuss this, especially this program with Hal Elrod, you'll learn twice as much. Any comments, Kim? Well, I think what Hal is saying is, um, is crucial. And I know how, how many of us, you know, get up in the morning and they shut off your alarm and you jump out of bed and you jump into the shower and you get some coffee and without even thinking, it's all autumn. People are on automatic. And I think what Hal is doing here with Miracle Morning is he's taking you off automatic and kind of putting you more in control of your own life. You tap into your spirit. Yeah, that's crucial. And the thing I want to say about Kim is that, you know, she was doing this long before Miracle Morning and like our house and pace and you go up there because of the stream, right? Right. I, I'll go up there for two, three days by myself and there's a stream and I'm in nature. There's trees all around. I, I find I have to be in nature. I crave being in nature because that's where I feel connected to the earth. Um, in South Carolina, our place there is on a pond. It's with trees. There's birds. There's deer. Um, I when when he when Hal talks about meditation, I oftentimes don't do a traditional meditation where I close my eyes and just sit. But I but I sit and I just look out at nature for I can be there for an hour and not do a we're just look and see and experience and just be with nature. So I I, I I've been practicing this for many years now and. Um, I guess the more I, and, and I literally do practice, it takes practice. I mean, you don't just read and then put it down. You got to actually read <clears throat> and, and then, read and and then put it into practice. And I journal and yes. Yep. So it's, you know, it is a miracle because you tap into the spirit. So with that said, I want to thank Hal Elrod. Please check out his movie, The Miracle Morning Movie, and please tap into your Miracle Morning. Thank you for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. <laughs> 